Hey folks, welcome back. And today we're gonna try to create some kind of polyphonic synthesizer as a VST3 inside of Max with the new rainbow patcher. So uh, let's see how easy and fast this is. And I opened already here Max. And for me, I disabled everything. I just want to have the Max console here. And this usually just outputs some debugging messages. And because we are real programmers, we completely ignore everything that happens in this uh, debugging console, right? Uh, but we need this here to open up a new patcher. And this looks like this. This is a regular max patch here and we create objects in here. So uh, at first I want to zoom in a bit here or maybe twice so you can see what's going on. So at first we need of course, an output, an audio output, so we can output signals to our sound driver or sound card. And we do this by creating an object here. And we create objects by just double clicking or using these buttons here on top. And I just use here the double click. And this opens up here an empty object and we can type in something. It's exactly like the um, black data tutorial I made, I made in the last video. It's basically the same concept uh, because Max uh, forked pure data at some point in the past and they added stuff on top. But it's usually the, the main base or how it works is the same. So we have here an empty object and you can see here the cursor is flashing. So we can type in what we want to add as an object. So we type in DAC tilde and DAC stands for digital audio conversion, I think. And the tilde basically tells um, that this object wants to or processes signals at audio rate or audio signals. So just hit return here. So we have a new audio output and we have a left output and a right output. So two channels, so stereo output, right? And then we want to create a new object here and this is our rainbow sub patch. So, so we create an object here called RNBO because it processes audio signals. And when we hit return, you can see we open up here a new patching window. And everything uh, in here is basically in here, or everything we do in here is this object, right? And you can see we have only a one output, which, which is the port message outlet and uh, default inlet. That's not what we need. We need two audio outputs in here or at this object. So we create your new object by double clicking in this patcher and call this out tilde because it processes audio outputs or audio signals. Uh, then empty space and one. That's the first output. And maybe we zoom in also here. Uh, yes. Output one. And you can see we already created your new outlet. The signal outlet one. Right, this is the left channel. And then we want to create here a second output, which is the right channel. So out two. And you probably can guess that you can create more outputs if you want to, but we only need stereo output. So we have two outlets here. And we also connect here the second output to the input of the DAC. So we can hear something when we do something. So in this rainbow patcher now here, we can um, create stuff to um, yeah, synthesize sounds. So the easiest way to do this would be to create some kind of oscillator. And we can do this by double clicking and creating a new object. And there are multiple oscillators inside of uh, Max or this rainbow environment, of course. And you can, for instance, use your saw, sawtooth waveform or wave oscillator. Uh, but we want to use here, um, let's use cycle, which is the sine oscillator and also tilde because it outputs audio signals. So let's hit return. And now we could easily just connect here the output of the cycle oscillator with the outlets here, but we need to do something first. And this is, we need to specify a frequency of this oscillator. We have here an frequency input and we need some kind of number and we can create a number by using here at the top a uh, numbers button. And then we can choose between a floating point number or 
just an integer, which is no floating points. And that's what we need. We just want to specify basically a frequency, uh, maybe let, let's say 500 Hertz, around 500 Hertz. So we can connect to the output of this with the cycle input. And the first input check here shows you the, the, the help, the online help basically shows you cycle frequency, uh, frequency of phase. So it accepts basically a value. That's exactly what we are doing here. We're giving the sine oscillator a frequency, so 500 Hertz. Maybe switch this on here so um, the audio um, is active or this whole patcher is active. And then we can connect, or maybe pull this down here a bit. We can connect the output of the oscillator here with output one and out two. And you can already hear. We have basically a sign wave playing uh, to our speakers and we can change the frequency. So that's basically half the synth already, right? So what we need to do now is we need to create some kind of MIDI input. So we can use our uh, MIDI keyboard to play. Actually, I have to switch it on here. Uh, so, so we can play something on the keyboard and change the frequency. Now I already did this, I think, in the plug data um, tutorial last time. But here I want to do it again, of course. So we create a new object. And Use note in, no tilde, because it just outputs uh, regular signals. And we need to convert this note data because we're getting basically the note number of the key we are pressing on the keyboard. So if I press, uh, I think, C3, we get a number of 60. If I press uh, C sharp, then we get 61 and so on. So it's just a number, a MIDI number. And we need to convert this into frequencies. So C3 needs to be, instead of 60, it needs to be um, 262, I think a bit because it's uh, 262 for C3. So we need the frequency number, right? So we can do this by creating a new object and using a uh, MTOF, um, which stands for MIDI to frequency converter. And we connect to the MIDI number or the note number output with the input of this. And this outputs now here a frequency. And we can use this frequency to connect us here maybe also to our slider or to our number box so we can see what's changing. Maybe connect this here a bit more. Let's see if it's actually uh, working. So no, it's, it's not working uh, because we don't get notes in here. Um, Let's right click this and open note help. Um, let's see how this, this looks like here. Um, we probably need um, MIDI in. Yes, yeah, so you, you can see here is a rainbow object and we need load mass, MIDI info, and then we can change here what kind of uh, MIDI input we want. And we get this MIDI in thing and then we can connect here with the RMBO patcher. So we just do this and I disable here the locking thing. Just select everything. Uh, control and C, Control and V. So we input this here and we just connect these two, right? And we select here uh, the right MIDI input. I use my Keyset Pro and we can close here this helping, helping patcher again. And maybe sw switch this on. And now I can play something on the keyboard. Perfect. So we can change the frequency actually with our MIDI keyboard and it's the right key. And we get the right frequency for our uh, sine oscillator. The next step would be to change the volume of this uh, oscillator output here. And we do this by just the math operations. We use here the multiplication and the tilde, of course, because it's it wants to process audio signals to just hit return. We can grab this here, hold shift, and just plug it or plug it in between here. 
um, and also this one goes into there. So it's just just one output here and um, two outputs there. So just it, it's a mono signal, right? So the left channel and the right channel are basically the same because our sine oscillator is just a mono signal. And here we have a multiplication and the second input check is empty. So here we can input also a number. So maybe use here this time floating point number because we want to have numbers. Let's open up here the uh, this one. We want to have numbers between zero and one. So one is the loudest volume and zero is yeah no volume at all. You can input here the values minimum, maximum for this box because this box is currently selected. So we input here zero, which is the minimum number. The maximum number is one and everything in between. Because this is a floating point, we have here now, um, yeah, zero dot one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So uh, floating point steps until we hit one. So we can pull this down and we can use this number here to input this into the multiplication. And this is basically just a volume or a mixer or yeah, an operation that changes the volume of something. So we can switch this on and we can change the volume here. And we can change the, the frequencies uh, with the keyboard. Okay, so now we want to change actually this here, not with this number box. We want to change this maybe um, with an envelope, uh, right? So when you press a key, you want to have an attack and then you want to have a sustain phase and a release phase when you actually release the key on the keyboard. So we can do this by using an ADSR tilde object here. And this outputs basically a number between um, zero and one. It's exactly what we want. And we also have here some inputs for the attack. We have here uh, ADSR trigger and we have um, decay. We also have sustain and release. And if we open up here the help menu for this, right click or you just hold alt and click it. Uh, we can see here um, these two here are basically in milliseconds. We can define a number that defines the milliseconds, so the attack phase in milliseconds, decay phase in milliseconds. Then we have the sustain level, which is between zero and one. So zero is quiet and um, one is the loudest part. And then we have release here again in milliseconds. So this the sustain level here is basically a bit differently. And one starts the envelope and the message of zero releases the key, right? So one is start the envelope or everything that's not zero. Yeah, yeah, it's basically the explanation. A non-zero number gives the maximum level of the envelope. Um, so we can utilize here um, to trigger this, we can utilize here the velocity like I did in the other tutorial too. And uh, we also need to convert this number because the velocity is always between zero and 127. That's the maximum velocity number in the MIDI standard. And this one here has the maximum number of one and the minimum value of zero. So we have to convert this by using an object and dividing everything by 127. So the maximum velocity number or value of 127 becomes one and everything in between is scaled down accordingly. So we can take this and put this into here the trigger of the ADSR. And basically what we are doing is when we pressing a key here and the velocity is probably when we press something on the keyboard is probably above zero. So maybe 60 or something like this gets divided by 127. Then it's a non-zero uh, value which triggers the ADSR and also sets the sustain phase to the correct number. And we can change the attack, decay and release phase. And we can change this by using also numbers. So um, maybe delete this. So use here a number box and we want to use also here integer. So no, no floating points basically. 
So, this is the attack. Uh, maybe duplicate this. Um, this is uh, decay. Duplicate this. This is sustain. And here we need to set this also minimum zero, maximum one. Because this is not milliseconds, it's a different unit. And we also want to have release here at the end. Okay, so we can dial in milliseconds for the attack, for the decay, for the release, and we want to have something. Actually, this, this needs to be here an loading point because we want to have something between zero and one. Connect these two and here minimum zero maximum one okay so now we can dial in something in between so now let's try it out if it works um oh we have to actually connect these two here so maybe make a, a sharper attack longer release So it basically works nice. We can maybe also set this to minimum zero because we don't want to have values below zero. So it's safe to use. Okay, so now that we have this, um, we maybe can already try and export this as VST and try it out in Bitfix Studio, right? So maybe we just save this here. Um, save as and maybe um, call it... Uh, Holy Synth 2. Just save this and maybe use your export uh, button and choose uh, audio plugin export. Um, format and platform is VST3 Windows. We are on Windows currently and we call this maybe um, Holy Holy synth, or maybe synth tutorial, so you can see how it's called. Company is Polarity, of course. It's an instrument. Output directory is already set here to my VST um, directory. It's uh, programs, common files, VST3. That's correct. Um, then we have include presets, uh, blah, 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 open export directory. It's not what we want. And we can just hit here, export to selected target. And you can see here, there's some um, debugging messages. And also the compiling is not done locally. It's uh, uploaded, you basically upload this patch into the cloud, upload generated code and start cloud build. So it's compiled basically on their servers. I don't know why they did this, but I'm sure there's a pretty good reason for that. And we were waiting here basically for the cloud build to come back. And then the VST3 is put into our uh, VST3 directory. So we can see finishing successfully exported to target. So we can open up here our uh, VST3 plugin and it's already in the wrong directory which is pretty nice um, so maybe copy this here and go back to our VST3 directory put this in there just pass it in there and should be here synth tutorial nice so now we open up a uh, bitwig studio here and maybe this should be already in there synth tutorial devices and we have this here so open this up you can see the interface is pretty yeah minimal uh, but it's not important so just activate here the input and maybe in the patcher here of, of, um, in here we want to maybe disable this and now we can see it kind of works. We have this clicking happening. 
but there's actually no controls for attack, decay, and anything like that. So we need to implement that. So just delete this here. But you can see the VST actually loads and it kind of works. We have at least something happening. And go back to our uh, thing here, to our max patcher. Maybe close this down. And we want to implement basically our controls. Instead of having these numbers, we want to have uh, parameters we can change uh, at the synth in, uh, in, in Bitwig. Uh, so we can change the tag, decay, and sustain, and so on. And we can do this by using an object here in the rainbow patcher called param. And it wants to complete it to find a parameter that con con can control RBNO or rainbow externally, right? So this is what we want. And we can give this a name and the name is attack probably and we can define here uh, a minimum or let's let's go for the shorthand here min and the minimum number is uh, of course zero 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 milliseconds and instead of this number here we use this for the attack okay then we do the same uh, for decay, connect this here to the second input so we can delete this. And then we do this, of course, for uh, sustain, let's return, connect this. And here the minimum is also zero, but the maximum, maximum number is one. So let's use one here. Uh, maybe pull this down. Um, we can delete this here. And then we need, of course, this one here. And this is release. Hit return. Connect this here to the last input jack and just delete this. So now we define basically all these parameters and they should show up in the VST3 implementation, basically. Um, also, we have here some error messages because I haven't renamed uh, in time, um, but it's corrected now. So we have all um, unique names, attack, decay, sustain, release. And we have also defined here the minimum value and here the maximum value of one for the sustain phase. And this should be good. So. Let's save this here. Um, maybe also here export and use export again. Um, maybe let's see if I can go back here to the... Okay, let's use this. Export. And we want to overwrite. So you can see your program files, common files, VST3, overwrite. Yes, we want to do that. And you have to make sure that you actually unloaded here the VST3, uh, otherwise you get an error because you already have the VST running. So um, you need to make sure that the VST is closed or uh, unloaded. Hit OK. And again, everything is uploaded to the cloud and they compile everything on their servers and we hopefully get a nice build back. So the build is finished. Uh, successfully exported to target. So maybe open up here the window again. And now we are in the correct folder here. Programs, common files, VST3. And we have here um, the newest version. Yeah, it's the same time. So it's a new, uh, a new file. And we can go back here to Bitwig Studio and try to load this up. Uh, so uh, synth tutorial, VST3. And look at that, we have now release, sustain, decay, attack as parameters. So let's try it out. Uh, maybe I have to go back here first to this one and after this, oh, it's actually disabled. So if, if I don't disable this, I basically play in the background with my MIDI keyboard, um, Max and Bitwig at the same time, which is not what I want. I want to play actually only this instance. So we have this click again. We can input here um, sustain, decay, attack, 
and release. Oh, we can see here um, the numbers are actually not right. We have here something between 0 and 1 for the release. That's not what we want. Uh, we want to have much, much higher numbers because this is milliseconds. So we have to check something. What we can see, we have here um, parameters exposed to the VST3 uh, interface and we can use it, we can change it and it does something. At least we have some sound running. Close this down, unload it and we go back to the patcher and we want to see here what we can do. So, um, so maybe we input here first, instead of min zero, we also add here max, a max value of maybe let's go for 200 milliseconds. Okay. Um, also your decay needs maximum of 200 and maybe the release phase here gets a bit longer of a maximum value of maybe 500 milliseconds okay so now that we have this um this, this should be good actually this should be working and we want to implement a bit more because the problem is we have only a monophonic synthesizer so we can only play one note at a time and we want to have a polyphonic synthesizer we want to play chords we want to play multiple notes at the same time and we can do this pretty easily it's actually much more easy easier than before with the rainbow here uh, with the rainbow patcher we can just add here a new parameter to the global rainbow patcher and call it polyphony and add a number for instance eight or four which is the maximum number of voices we want to use in parallel so let's go for eight or maybe 16 notes here and um, yeah we should be good so let's save this save this up and maybe um, compile it again so export again override yes that's what we want to do and here we go so and we have our compiled um, vst3 back from the cloud so we can try it out in Bitwig. Okay, so let's go back. Um, synth tutorial. And let's see. Oh yeah, we have much, much higher numbers now. You can see here we can go up to uh, 500 for the release. Sustain, decay, attack. And let's try it out. And let's play multiple notes. Wow. So it's actually not that hard to create a synthesizer in uh, this rainbow uh, thing. And maybe we can do some more because it's that easy. So back in Max here, we probably want to create some kind of FM modulator so we need a second oscillator to modulate the first oscillator so we have our sine oscillator here and we have an frequency input and we want to combine this with the second oscillator that modulates actually the frequency while maintaining the grand um, pitch of our key okay so before we start to do this I want to show you how you can tweak this patch here because we use now here these parameters and when you switch on here this uh, project and you play something on the keyboard you actually hear nothing besides the small little click because you can't change these parameters so you can do this by just using here this general or um, this parent object as an vst plugin and just input um, these parameters here and you can do this by using um, this object here attribute ui and you get basically a pull down here and the number box and we can just put this over here and connect this with the input of the rainbow patcher and now this pull down is filled with all the parameters we can 
change. So for instance, here we have the sustain, right? This is our sustain knob and we can change this from the outside. So now at least we can hear something. You can also uh, duplicate this here with control and D. Connect this also with the input. And now we can change here the release. Maybe a bit more. So uh, we can tweak it a bit better um, and see if everything is right before we actually compile the VST. So in here, we don't need this uh, because we change the volume of the sine oscillator with the ADSR anyway. This is just here from the beginning, so we can just hit delete on that. And we need, um, oh, also this here, this is not needed really. We can delete this. You can also see here in the top, we have an error message number, UI objects, which are these, um, these number boxes here are not supported in polyphonic patcher. So we can't use them anyway. Um, so let's delete that, connect these two here and we are good to go. So here we have the ADSR, maybe we put this a bit to the side, a bit, a bit here, maybe put this over there um, and make us a bit more room for new, uh, for the new patch. So now we need a second oscillator, that's for sure. This is our modulator oscillator that uh, modulates basically this first one. So the sine oscillator itself not only accepts here um, an, an signal, it also accepts audio signals. So we can convert this number signal into an audio signal by using a signal tilde object. And just hook this here in between with shift. You can see now we have here audio signals, right? So now that we have this audio signal, and it works exactly like before, I think. Yeah, it's the same as before. Um, so now we can mix this here with the audio output of this uh, sine oscillator by using an plus operation tilde, because it's audio signals. Hook this in between. And then we connect this oscillator with this one uh, or with this path. So now we are getting here the frequency of our MIDI keyboard and we mix this with the second oscillator. So we keep basically the, the main fundamental frequency, but we want to add frequency modulation from a second oscillator and we want to keep the tonality and the ratios and so on. So this one here, also uh, gets, of course, um, the frequency from here. So we get this number, which is because we want to have, we want to change the frequency, frequency of both oscillators at the same time. We want to pitch it up or down. Um, but this one here, we want to offset um, to, to have a different ratio um, and then modulate the first oscillator. Um, so we can change the ratio here by adding a plus operation um, just without tilde. And we also hit shift here and hook this up in between. Oh, doesn't work. Yeah, something like this. And then we need the parameter here. And we call this parameter um, it's called name. We call this ratio. Something like this. Um, minimum is zero and maximum is maybe 10,000 or something like this. And put this here. So we can offset the MIDI frequency. So we hit C3 and then we want to change the frequency up from C3 or down from C3. So we want to change the ratio. Um, so we have this. And we maybe also use here a new interface element so we can try it out. Hook this up and use here um, ratio. And then we want to change the amount, the modulation amount, right? How much we want to um, influence the original oscillator. I mean, we could do this here, of course, again, by such a multiplication operation. So we just duplicate this here and connect this here. 
and we have a second parameter and this one is called amount and maybe the amount is uh, yeah is also 10,000 maybe let's use it like this okay so here we have the ratio duplicate this um, we connect these two and we can change this here to uh, amount we have here and um, yeah maybe let's give it a go so ratio amount So it sounds like it works. We can modulate the first oscillator and also the um, yeah the second modulator oscillator is changing accordingly with the keyboard and we can also apply some offset. So let's save this, save this here and export it again. And of course overwrite. Okay, so the build is done. It's already in the VSC3 directory and we can just, oh, maybe always forget that. Disable this here, audio off. And go back here to this and load our synth tutorial plugin. Maybe we also use here model delay. So it sounds a bit better. Um, let's go for reverb. Dial it back. bit of release, sustain, decay, tag, maybe ratio. Yeah, nice. And because this is bit big, we can, of course, attach here some expression modulators. So we can use the expression and change the amount with the velocity, so the amount of the FM modulation. It's a pure raw FM synth, VST3 synth. Um, and you can, of course, imagine that you can implement a lot of different additional things um, like the way you want it. But I want to show you how easy it is actually to start from scratch in Rainbow to create a synthesizer in Rainbow and also export it as a VST3 and tweak it to your likings. Okay. So um, yeah, I think that's it for the first tutorial. Uh, leave me a like if you liked the video and keep hitting me with the questions in the comments and maybe give me some feedback if you want to see more tutorials about Rainbow or Plug Data and um, yeah, more soon. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video, guys. Bye.